Hi. You guys, I am the worst prototyper ever. I have been planning on just kind of steaming through putting together this skeleton of the app really quickly so I can have something to show you guys, but I keep getting bogged down in these interesting but um, right now fairly pointless little tangents. What I've been working on this week is the track slider, which is a level meter. So if you hold your finger on a track now, it shows you this new screen, which is the, the track options. And you can uh, tap this to pull it down and all these switches work. That's all very nice. Tap it again to make it hide. But most of the time in the last week, I've spent playing with this particular control here. Now this is going to be an animated level meter and volume control. And I've gone back to a old technology that I used to use. It's, it's old, but it's continually being updated called OpenGL. You've probably heard of it. There are a number of ways of doing animation and graphics on iOS, and they range from the more arcane but efficient OpenGL up to the really lovely to use and beautiful but not particularly fast uh, quartz and core animation. So Loopy HD right now, as it is, is all quartz and core animation. It's very easy to implement and work with, but it's not that efficient. Um, it works fine with Loopy, but Loopy Masterpiece uses quite a lot of transparency, as you've probably noted. And it's got this you know, transparent background, which is animated, and all of the controls are just very slightly opaque, so the color sort of shows through. Now, iOS isn't great at transparency. It's okay, and it's better than it was, but it, Whenever you render a view, if it's transparent, you've got to do the stuff behind it. You've got to blend it backwards until you reach a opaque view. It's more work for the graphics system to do. And as I discovered a few weeks ago, the more work the graphics system does on this newer hardware, the more it seems to impact the audio thread. And that means you're getting closer to the risk of glitches. So the word on the street is iOS 8.3 fixes a lot of that, but my tests have found it's actually still a problem. So I've decided to look into OpenGL again. I say again because Loopy 1 itself was implemented completely in OpenGL. It didn't plan out that way originally, but I found on that old hardware, it was the only way, only way I could get the frame rate that I wanted. So yeah, I'm relearning OpenGL, which has been kind of fun in a really torturous brain explodey way. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. But I succeeded, and this view is now rendered completely in OpenGL, which is very satisfying, because now I can use that same uh, skeleton and those skills that I've reacquired to do other views as well. So the idea is to have Masterpiece be just really efficient. I mean, people have asked and kind of assumed that Masterpiece would be bloated and a bit uh, challenging for older devices. That's not what I want. I want it to be able to work quite smoothly everywhere. So that's my plan. The other thing is, um, I showed this to Sebastian yesterday, this animation between the track screen and the session screen. And he raised the really good point that it's quite complicated and kind of all over the place. You know, the, the tracks themselves um, swish out of the screen and then the setting screen comes up in sections from the bottom. It doesn't really have any common directionality. So what it means is that you don't really get a clear idea of what is coming from where and what is associated with what. Um, an example of how this is done well is the iOS home screen, where you know you press the home button and it everything fades out in the same direction. You, know, you tap the settings screen, it slides the icons out, and then the app zooms in from where you tapped. Now I want to do that. I think that's probably the way to go. And I think I'll probably have it so that when you hold on a track, it will actually expand out the settings from there. It's that sort of affordance that I want to get right with Masterpiece, but I'm not always very good at it. So fortunately, I have a Sebastian to help me with that. So I'll be working on that soon. Anyway, speaking of me not being very good at things, I found a hilarious piece of memorabilia this week that I'm going to leave you with. Um, this is the, the tutorial video that launches on the first launch of Loopy 1. Of course, it's now well into the distant past, but I found it a really amusing example of my high production stand. I mean, I, I wrote the music for that thing. I animated all of this, uh, all the motion blurs and stuff by hand. I did it in Flash, I think, and then did a screen capture. Um, but it's three minutes, in fact, it's longer than three minutes long. That's way too long for a tutorial. No one will ever take in that much information. 
but I have cheerful music and it's kind of nice to watch while your brain melts. So enjoy. Talk to you next week.